Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Blue Archive episode number 9, Reaction. Okay, the previous episode, um, we went to the aquarium. Hoshino uh, was the one who, uh, like, you know, said, told everyone to go with them, with her. And they had, a, like, a good time and, you know, like, looked at a lot of fishes and the different stuff that you can do in a, you know, aquarium. And in the end, like, Sensei buys them a little, uh, that little gift that they bought. And yeah, so that was, like, the fun part. And then comes in the more serious part where we get to see um, that Shiroko saw Hoshino in the street, you know, like over, over there, like going on that in, inside that car. And she thought that maybe she's in some kind of trouble, asked her, but she was like, oh no, it's, everything is okay. You know, in the end, she comes across the transfer contract that um, Hoshino had in her bag. And he, she didn't really bring that up in front of everybody, but later on Shiroko goes and talks to Sensei about it. So let's see what happens in today's episode, <coughs> episode number, um, wait, nine? Yeah, let us get started. Um, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference, and let's begin. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a little backstory. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this is that girl we always see, see in her pictures. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. Heading out to the Abydos Desert. Hmm. She's probably going to ask for the, the contract. She has it with her, I guess. There we go. Hmm. All right, yeah. Real is. 
Kaiser Construction. Yeah, so it's the Kaiser Company. Yep. Yeah. Ownership of the Abra's main building started by the dead. Damn! Right, so they're doing something in the, as they said, they're doing something in the desert. What? I see, so the previous student council. Each student is autonomous. Yeah. They didn't even realize this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, show the vice president. Okay. Damn. Oh, okay. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> Right, that's her. She has like blue hair, okay. I'm trying to see if I know her because, you know, maybe she is there in the game as a character and... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they needed money, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I see, that's why they're keeping the, yeah, that's why they're keeping the school go on, not shutting it down, because we're literally amounting more money, like, we, yeah. Hmm. And now what do we do? Hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah, they want the the place. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe they need the, like a big place or like a land. Yeah, they're doing something there. Oh yeah, they didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, we have to see what's happening. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Right. Well, it's a desert. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we saw in those flashbacks. Oasis. Oh, okay. Hmm. Ah. But yeah. Now, since it's dried up. Ah, uh, oh yeah, it's it's dried up. Oh my god, they're doing something there. They made a facility. Yeah, it is it's the uh, what's the, the the Kaiser. Oh god, they're like literally made like a fortress here. Bruh. Oh god. DMC. What, what, what is that? Oh. Right. Guys, yeah, you guys have been spotted. Yeah. I don't think we can retreat. They'll get us. What the? Oh my god, this is like the big honcho. Is it that guy? The guy with the... No, who is this? Is that a leader or whatever of... The... Gematria. Probably like the chairman or something, I don't know. Director. Right. Yeah. So they're like making like a military base so that's why they need this place to make military
Yeah. Treasures. Oh. I s No, I see. That's why they want to get their hands on the school as well. Yeah, because they might think that the, the treasure is there or something. Yeah, they're, they're whittling them down using like loan expenses. And that's how they plan on taking over. Oh my god. Oh no, they may have targeted the school. Oh no. What? Kaiser Lo- ah, Okay, how is this like- Wait, is there no rules here? Like, wh what, what is this? I guess it's their company, they can do whatever the hell they want to. But still, isn't there like some kind of- like regulatory body or something? Huh. Oh boy. Well, yeah. Oh. Oh boy. Oh no, she's gonna get pissed. He's not going to attack. He knows. It's... Well, we better take care of this before next month. I guess we have to. Now that this is the case. Like, I don't understand. Isn't, shouldn't there be some kind of a regulatory body so that these companies cannot do whatever the hell they want to? Hmm. So they think that's a lie that they're saying. How? No, that's not the... In no way can we do that. We have to do something else. Yeah. Exactly. How can you like 3000%? Like what? Yeah, what do we do then? Hmm. Hmm. So she died, I'm guessing. Okay. 
I was, I was saying like, you know, like I was trying to see if I s Oh, it's going to bring out the thing. Okay, what I think is like they probably gave her an offer that, oh, if you come out of the school transfer, then we'll take care of the loan or something like that. I don't know. It's something like that, I guess. Hmm. 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 Okay. They didn't. What did she say to him? Okay, that was weird. I'm guessing they tell us later. I was thinking she was going to say like, oh, I have to leave here or something. But since his reaction now is a bit different than I expected. Maybe it's some, not something like that. Hmm. Oh my god, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Is there something left? No, that's it. Okay, that actually ended in a very abrupt way. So I'm guessing something's gonna happen next episode. Like, you know, the way they ended it is like, oh, see you tomorrow, and then it suddenly ended. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm guessing tomorrow, which will be next week in the next episode, uh, will probably not be very happy. I don't know. 
like here's the thing the final scene was very interesting because i was i don't know like i don't know what i expected but she was it seemed like that situation Russian would say something like oh like now that you've seen the the paper the contract paper um i have to say something i'll be leaving abidos or something like that i was expecting you know but usually what obviously like they do this sometimes they cut that portion out and they're going to reveal what she said at that time but what surprised me the most was sensei's reaction so whatever hoshino said there sensei was surprised at that she's he's like i was expecting him to be like oh no don't take a hasty decision you know we can do this together something like that he would say and which would imply that she said something along the lines of i will be leaving this place um but his reaction is completely different he seems surprised and you know he was like okay i'm sure everyone will listen to you like you know like when you tell this to them tomorrow when you share this with them and she was like yeah and you know so i'm guessing whatever she said there wasn't something like what i thought it was but then again this whole ending scene gives me the vibe that she will probably take on the 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 contract the transfer contract now my guess is that now here's the thing i i don't know what i i, I thought but i think i assumed that that guy who was talking to hoshino you know that that weird guy you know the smoky guy i don't know his name you know he i thought he was part of the kaiser corporation so i thought that like they were like i don't know like something like threatening her or saying something like oh come like you know like change your class change your school uh, then we can let the loan you know like like we will let go of that but obviously today's episode proves that that's not the case kaiser corporation's goal is something different they want this place they want the land because of like whatever treasure they think is there you know so and and then now i another thing i think is that now that we have seen the leader of the kaiser corporation i think that smoky guy who was talking with um hoshino i think that is a com- now i think that he's a completely different group than the kaiser corporation so that's i think that's like a third party who's involved with this and they probably gave hoshino the contract the transfer contract and he probably was like oh if you take this contract we will take care of your debt or something along those lines i think like a, and they like gave like a choice to hoshino that oh take this contract like you know like transfer out of the school we'll take care of the loan or maybe something along those lines who knows i might be wrong you know but yeah let's let's see because that's i think that that would kind of make sense and that would fit perfectly in this narrative then again you know like who knows maybe it'll be something different you know this is just an assumption that i'm making um right Okay so yeah that was today's episode a few things like you know that was uh, this whole episode a few things happened today first and foremost they got to know about the kaiser corporation that they are the ones who have um gotten like the 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 land you know the the place that was supposed to be under abidos the kaiser construction you know they are doing their stuff over there and they realized that it was probably something that the previous student council had to do to probably counteract the loan like the yearly increasing loan that they have to give off maybe because of that pressure they had to sell this place off and you know like not this place off but the different the, the surrounding places off little by little but as i said it didn't really um you know it didn't really help out the core problem but basically what they were doing is like they were selling off the places and just barely being able to keep up with the interest because this is the thing like in these type of situations the interests are like crazy amounts so more and more you wait the more the interest will pile up and you'll find like you know there a time will come when you'll be you'll realize that you're having difficulty in even keeping up with the interest in itself let alone the actual debt so you know and by paying off the interest at least it doesn't really help in the long run because you're not really paying the debt off the debt is still there so even if you pay the interest off 
the interest will pile up again in the subsequent you know, in the consecutive years so basically you're just biding for time that's basically what you're doing so that is why they were like it doesn't really help the situation but then again as hoshino said like at that point of time you know it was necessary you know like situations like these people do whatever they can to at least hold on to even a little bit more longer and this was probably the only way left for them to do this so you know that was what we saw now here's another thing that's what i like you know we got to see a little glimpse of the student council president here we saw the uh, we saw her like a little glimpse in the previous episode as well on the picture of hoshino you know that's beside hoshino's table there's like she's there and then there's the student council president whose uh, face is blurred out not face but the whole face is like you know kind of light so that we cannot see her but here we can kind of make a rough outline of her she she has like blue hair i think as far as i could understand and uh, you know she kind of you know her i don't know her whole wait a minute she reminds me a lot of nonomi you know especially her hairstyle and everything Maybe that is why, like, Hoshino is so attached to Nonomi, because maybe Nonomi reminds her of her student council president or something like that. You, like, you know, you've, you've seen her, like, you know, p putting her head on her lap and everything. Like, yeah, he's all, she's very touchy-feely with others as well, but, you know, like, with Nonomi especially, she's, like, always, like, you know, just there, and Nonomi also kind of, like, you know, pampers her as well. So maybe that's why she's so attached to Nonomi, because she reminds her of the previous student council president. I don't know, it's just an assumption again. Um, anyways, but what I was trying to do was I was trying to remember if I've seen, like, you know, sometimes in, a, like in anime, not anime, but like, you know, games like this, we see that there are certain characters who are not really shown at the beginning, but later on they get introduced. And, you know, so I was thinking maybe something like that, because this is like the beginning of the story, you know. Maybe now that Blue Archive, the game, has been going on for so many years, I was thinking maybe this character gets introduced later on as a playable character or something. That's why I was trying to think like, oh, if I remember seeing her in the game, if, if I remembered seeing her in the game, I would be like, oh, so that means she will get introduced later and will she probably become playable. But then in the end, I realized she's probably dead. You know, that's why she, she, she's just, you know, like, it's pretty like obvious. Like, it was heavily implied as we see, you know, like in the end, um, in that little flashback as well that she probably died but then again I'm, I'm not sure if she's dead or if, she, if something else happened to her but she's probably like in a very bad situation now the reason why i'm not saying dead is because i do know that it's very difficult to kill people here especially people with halos so but i, I guess it's not that it's not possible you know like it's when when the halos are there it's just difficult to kill them but they still will die if I guess they like sustain a huge amount of damage or maybe when the halos are like turned off or something I don't know you know I think someone mentioned this to me in one of the previous episode comments I've forgotten what you know properly but it's something like that either way um so I'm not 100% sure if she's dead or something but she's definitely not here anymore that's pretty obvious by the way she you know like Hoshino reacted as we saw she went back to the um you know like the student council in the flashback and she was crying looking at that that scrumpled up paper right so yeah and yeah that was today's episode and also we went through the into the desert and we met the big honcho behind all of this the the leader of the what did you call call him director yeah of the kaiser corporation or whatever and oh also another thing i wanted to talk about here you can see he's suddenly like, oh, um, yeah, increase the interest rate for like 3000% or something. Here's the thing, like I can understand this is their company, they can do whatever the hell they want to, you know, but shouldn't there a regulatory body exist so that these type of companies cannot take advantage or cannot take, um, like, you know, like, like it cannot exploit their uh, clients. I'm sure there's something like this should exist because then all these companies can do whatever the hell they want to and it'll be total anarchy. 
the, the fact that he can literally do something like this like what in my guess i would have i would have assumed that the general student council should be the one who would be um like in charge of all of these regulatory stuff like oh so that the big companies over here they cannot take advantage of situations like this for example even though it is his company and he's well within the right to like adjust the uh, interest rate they cannot do something like this this is literally preying on you know other people's like you know like thing like you know like this is li literally exploitation you know so shouldn't there be like a neutral party third party here who is in charge of this whole place that's why i'm saying like shouldn't that fall under the job of the general student council you know so couldn't sensei do something about this like you know like go and talk to the general student council and yeah i guess the general student council missing the student council president that is why a lot of the troubles are popping up but then again like shouldn't they like intervene in this situation cannot they intervene in this situation and be like oh you cannot do that like obviously like what is this like like this should be legal like your 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 clients you at first you were like oh like this amount this percentage of interest and now when you're seeing that they're in trouble you increase it like obviously this is exploitation this shouldn't be legal uh, so yeah that's what you know like anyways I'm, I'm not really sure uh what you know like why these companies can do whatever the hell they want to and uh, i'm guessing that's why i'm saying i'm guessing it's probably like like the student council the general student council is probably in charge of this and i'm guessing they're not able to do anything now because the student council president is missing or something i don't know anyways um uh yeah but that was yeah that was not okay at all right and there you go that was today's episode hmm yeah and that was that so let's see how this goes and you know what Hoshino has to say the next day like I said the way they ended it abruptly when Hoshino said when sensei was like see you tomorrow yeah it gives me a feeling that something's going to be happening next episode um right so that is that now let me talk about this episode scene by scene in the very first scene we get to see a uh, younger Hoshino um talking to the student council president and she was talking about the abydos san festival and you can see hoshino is very different here you know she's very um like you know like very cold very um like frank very um like to the point kind of you know her hair is short you know her way of speaking is very different um she's more of the serious type here and uh, oh you know what i think i understand one thing i'm guessing she probably let her hair go like in in lengthened her hair probably because of the student council president you can see the student council president's hair is long here so maybe like you know because of that she did that yeah and like i said i think like it's it's probably because like she she definitely I'm, I'm sure she she definitely reminds her like you know normally definitely reminds her of the student council president because she literally looks like like you know her her whole like you know body like you know posture her figure her you know hairstyle everything is so similar to nonomi so yeah and, and i guess that that makes sense why she's so friendly with nonomi because she reminds her of her probably um anyways okay yeah so yeah and, and here you can see the student council president was like oh like sand festival at which Hoshino was like come on like you know this is not the time and you can see how positive like you know the student council president was and she's like oh we cannot say what will happen you know like this is we can we can keep our hopes up um you know like maybe some miracle will happen at which Hoshino was like like come on like none of this are going to happen and she gets mad there and tears off the the thing and that's how the episode started Later, we get to see um, Hoshino talking to Shiroko and talking about the, the whole situation the previous day that happened. Hoshino's like, I'm sorry, like, you know, like, or you, you know, that whole situation. Um, and Shiroko tells her that, you know, if you're, you know, if, if there's some kind of a problem you're going through, you can tell us, you know, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out as much as I can. But yeah, he, she doesn't really say much. She's like, oh, you're, you're very nice. And that's how the whole conversation ended. Next, we get to see in the student council room. Um, uh, what's her name? 
Ayane, yeah, Ayane, yeah, that's her name. Ayane comes in uh, with the, the, the investigation that they have done and they realized that the ones who have gotten the, their hands on the, the autonomous zones of the Abydos is the Kaiser construction, you know, basically the Kaiser Corporation. So, yeah, and, and what, how this happened, it was because of the student council, the previous student council. You know, and everyone's like, what the hell, like, you know, how can they do this, you know, and, uh, like, what were they thinking, especially Serika, Serika's like, what were they thinking, like, you know, like, this wouldn't solve the problem, like, by selling off their places, like, you know, like, it's not the way to do it, um, and then they're like, oh, Hoshino, you were actually part of the student council, weren't they, you, and she's like, yeah, I was the vice president, you know, Anyways, and she kind of explains how by student council, all there was like she and the student council president, you know, so she's like, it was just us two and we didn't have much stuff. And she talks about the student council president, how she was very airheaded, very scatterbrained, you know, and they used to go around, um, you know, patrolling the different places, they're doing this and that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so, right, so a big question comes up here, why are they trying to get the land? It's like sandy, the whole place is filled with sand, there's no value out of like this whole thing. So they're trying to think what type of like, you know, like advantage will the, uh, will the Kaiser Corporation have getting their hands on a place like this, you know, and uh, Okay, so here Sensei kind of breaks it down for everyone. She, he's like, okay, so basically what happened is that they had, obviously they had a big loan. <coughs> interest was huge. They couldn't pay off the interest, let alone the original loan. So obviously they had, like the student council had to put their hands on selling the, the, the autonomous zones. And by doing that, they were probably able to sell, uh, like, you know, settle the uh, interest at least. But obviously that didn't really help out on the long run because the debt was still there. You know, and this every year it increased and increased and the money kept piling on and on and they kept selling the different places more and more, little by little, whittling down the places and just losing everything. And at the end, all that was left was this school and probably the, the little place beside it. And that's it. This is what happened. And Seiko was like, how, like, you know, why, why did they do something like this? You know, like, like with, literally they played us like a fiddle. At which Hoshino says, like, it, you know, like, it's yeah it's it's not like you know that easy at that point of time it was just you know nothing we can they could do about it you know like to survive they had to do it like they knew that they were actually falling into the trap but there was no other choice hmm. okay so in the end they come to the conclusion that the kaiser corporation is not up to the money because what they're trying to do basically is get their hand on the school. So basically, they cannot really tell us to just uh, like shut down and leave. So what they're doing is they're, you know, preying on us using these crazy amount of loans and little by little whittling the place down. And then finally, when all that is left is of the, the, of the, the school, you know, they're sending in the Katakata Helmet Gang to harass us into leaving. So basically, in a roundabout way, they're trying to drive us out of this place. You know, so that must mean their main goal isn't the money. You know, they couldn't care less if we're not able to pay off the debt. You know, all that we have to do is leave and they'll get this place and everything will be OK. That's basically what they want. And that is like their main goal. So that is why this is happening. And then they're like, yeah, like what is like, why, what would they do with this place? You know. So that is when Shen says like, oh, maybe this is what Hina was talking about. And he talks about like, you know, what Hina told him. And everyone's like, well, well why didn't you tell us this? And Shen says, like, I was thinking when to tell this and that. Either way, they're like, all right, so let's go to the Abydos Desert and see what these guys are up to. Then maybe we'll get a little bit of a inkling as to what they're trying to do. Right. So in the end, they decide to do that. So Sensei and um, Ayane are staying in the you know, the place back in the school and all the others, they have started going towards the designated, the, the place, the, the, what do you call it? The oasis. Yeah. And here Hoshan kind of tells them stories about the oasis, how when back in the days when it was 
still an oasis. A lot of people used to come for the sand festival, this and that. Obviously, it was a very good and bustling place. Everyone is like, whoa, that happened? Because obviously now there's literally no people here. So for them to imagine back in the day that this place was bustling with hum like you know, with activity and people were there living around the oasis, like you know, having fun, doing festivals, is very like weird to them because in front of them it's literally nothing. It's like basically like ruins. So they're very surprised. They're like, wow, so okay, like that's interesting. Um Anyway, they were talking about all of this, and you can see Hoshino kind of reminiscing about the past, thinking about, you know, back then. And while all of this is happening, they come in front of the oasis, and yeah, in, in place of the oasis, it's literally like a fortress kind of place, like an institution. And this is where Hoshino says that the Kaiser PMC, private military company, I think that's a full form. So it's like a private military for them. They're basically doing stuff like this, like producing these you know robotic like stuff um like m weapons and stuff you know and all these like you know like ma basically making like a little army for them so and they easily find them out and you know like obviously they don't really attack but the main honcho comes out the director of the kaiser corporation he comes out and he's like oh you guys you know like and he's like uh, be careful this is actually private property that you're standing on and obviously like everyone's like oh you guys are the one who like you know tricked us and uh, you know like got the, the places from us and uh, you know stuff like that and he's like yeah we did that but all of this was legal con like you know transactions you know and he kind of says here that okay you guys want to know why we're here and he says we're looking for treasures buried somewhere in the Abydos and what they think is like it's probably there in the school or like in the in the in the place near the school and that's why they're trying to drive them out of this place now here's the thing there was an interesting thing in the end where they mentioned that maybe that was a lie that they said yeah. that's not their true goal because i think later on INA says that we have done the research and it has been said there's no treasure here you know? so the fact that they said this probably means there's some other goal they have and this was just a cover-up story that they're using so you know like that's also another thing we need to keep in mind i guess anyways he, then he suddenly like okay you guys want to mess want to mess with us all right let's see like you know, I, I can immediately shut you guys all down so he takes out his phone and he calls someone and he's like yeah yeah do it do it and then we see ina like you know, her tablet blinks up and it's written Kaiser loan has increased, raised uh, the interest by 3000%. Now, like I said, I, I cannot believe that this is actually a thing. Like, this should, I'm, I'm sure there must be some kind of regulatory body who could, who, who can enforce their own, you know, like, rule over this whole thing. Like, you cannot literally do whatever the hell you want to, you know, like this. You can, like, this is literally exploitation, you know. The, the interest rate that you brought out first, you cannot literally change it now in the middle of the thing. Like, what is this? Like, what type of a joke is this? You know, so I don't know what's up with this whole thing. I'm, I'm I don't know. I think there should be some kind of a. Yeah, but who knows what's going on either way. Um, anyways, they're like, what the hell? And Hoshino here, Hoshino is like, guys, it's no, no ch like chance of doing anything now at this point. Let's go. Mm. So yeah, they try to leave and this guy's like, oh, you're that girl, you know, the, the smart girl, uh, I, I remember you. And then he brings up the student council and he's like, oh, I remember that student council as well. Like, you know, that, that stupid student council president. As soon as she says that, you know, um, Hoshino points a gun at him. And then she, he, she looks back and sees all her friends and she realizes if she does something now, her friends will get involved in this. So she lowers her gun again. Okay. Okay, one thing I need to check here. Okay, so here's the thing. When he says that about the student council, you can see that there's a little bit of a flashback and you can see there's a suitcase on the ground and Hoshino looking sad standing in front of the suitcase. So I'm guessing that was probably the student council presidents. 
and like I said, they don't really tell us exactly, but it does seem like something happened to her. Um, right. Anyways, uh, after that, um, they come back and later on they have a conversation with Sensei and everyone. And Shiroko's like, let's go. But now the whole group is like divided into two. One group is like, no, oh, no, we shouldn't do that. Like, you know, this is like criminal activity that we're doing. You know, and it's like, uh, like, we cannot do stuff like that. Like, you know, let's, let's uh, think about paying the debt off. And then again, everyone else is like, debt, what debt? 3000% interest? What can we do about that? Obviously, we cannot pay off the debt. There's one month left with, you know, with us. Within that amount of time, we have to do something. So it's like divide, literally divide into two groups, like, you know. So yeah. Um, either way, while they're having this whole conversation, what we should do, what we should not, Hoshino was like, guys, calm down, you know, like, like, just, just calm down. Um, and uh, we'll think about it later, you know, like, f for now, let's just cool off and gather tomorrow and talk about the whole thing. Um, right. And then they go off and Hoshino goes to the to roof. And Sensei comes in, Hoshino is kind of reminiscing. And you can see here a scene where Hoshino comes back to a student council. You can see, you know, the, the thing that she tore that is, has been like taped up. And like, I'm guessing the student council person probably did that, taped it up and tried to fix it. And Hoshino sees that and starts crying. Obviously, it implies something happened to her, you know, so yeah. Okay, so later on, uh, after that, Sensei comes in and Sensei shows Hoshino the transfer contract. And Hoshino's like, right. So she's like, okay, let's talk. And she starts walking with Sensei, talks to her, and, uh, you know, talks to him. And she talks about how Abydos was before the desertification, you know, how it was a large school, this and that. But... She says, I have absolutely no such memories or feelings. Yeah, it was basically a mess from the very start. School doesn't have a decent place at all. But still, it was her place. So, you know. And she says, like, you know, like, a lot of things happened after that, you know, this and that, like, because of the loan and everything. But now, in this, like, you know, foreclosure committee that I am in, and I met these guys, you know, the, the and and I, I like everyone, I like this place as well. You know, so and here she says something. Uh she says that Sensei I and that's it. It's a little cut. And then she's like, oh, you know. So she 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 told something to Sensei. I was expecting something like I'm going to transfer to a different school, something like that. So that is why I was expecting Sensei to be a lot more agitated and be and say something like, oh, don't do this, but think about this, something like along those lines. But I was very surprised seeing how Sensei reacted here. So she says, after whatever she told to Sensei, she says, I thought telling them the truth would only cause them more trouble. And you can see Sensei is surprised, other than, like, he's bewildered, like, you know, his face is, like, a very weird way, he's, like, just, like, you know, surprised. And she says, I cannot keep this a secret from them. Um, I will explain this to them tomorrow. Th that may confuse you, yeah. And Sensei says, like, no, not at all. Thank you for let telling me this. I'm sure they will be willing to share your troubles. So there you go. Sensei's reaction here making me think maybe it wasn't something like that Hoshino told Sensei. Maybe it was something else. But then again, like, you know, Sensei's like, oh, it's fine. Everything is okay. Like, you know, we can work together. And then again, that, like, I was like, okay, so maybe that was false alarm. You know, maybe it's something else that she wanted to tell Sensei. But then again, she starts saying some stuff like, Oh, I hope miracles would happen. <clears throat> and then again, like I said, he, the way they end this episode is very weird. She's like, oh, okay, then I'll go to sleep. Goodbye, Sensei. And Sensei says like, hmm, see you tomorrow. And end. So yeah, that was, that was very weird way they ended it. Obviously, it's an implication that things are not going to go well. 
next episode because they end the episode by saying like oh see you tomorrow so i'm guessing something will happen she'll probably not be here otherwise you know in the, in the next episode she'll probably i don't know something's happening i'm 100 percent sure but like i said the ending scene like gave me mixed signals like the way hoshino told something to sensei which we weren't able to hear and the way sensei reacted to me makes me think that wasn't the important thing that hoshino had to tell sensei she probably said something else to him at which sensei was like oh you know like we can work all together but whatever was the real problem she didn't bring it up to sensei and she, now she's going to take the step on her own whatever she's going to take whatever she's going to do from here onwards and she doesn't want us to get involved in that that's why she probably like i don't know like would set something else to sensei I, I, okay you know what let's wait next episode will probably give us all the answers and that was it that was today's episode um yeah episode number nine of blue archive so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that's it guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys uh, next week with another episode of blue archive until then goodbye and have a nice day